Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we sit back, take that midweek break, and talk about all the fun mm-hmm. things that have been going on in the world of Linux, open source, and everything else. I'm Old Man Ven, Ven Stone, joined every week by Jill Bryant in L.A. Mm-hmm. What's up? All the penguins hey. floating around in the background, and uh, with Pedro <laughs> Mateus, chilling out Hello. on the island mm-hmm. in Britannia. Um, tr- are you trying to be suave this week, man? Is that what's going on? Uh <laughs> No, <laughs> let's go with no on that one. <laughs> you couldn't play it safe. Jill, you just got back from uh, Susie Expert days. Yeah, yeah. So we just, uh, I just attended uh, Susie Expert days in LA Thursday and had a great time learning about new technologies within Susie and SLES and um, sp- spent the day with my Linux Gamecast friends, including Mir in chat. And S. Michelle, and later that night we went to dinner with Strider, and that was a lot of fun as always. Getting together with my LGC friends that's uh, that's 50% of the fun right there. <laughs> I think one of the neat things I saw this week um, was kind of a surprise, it was in the show notes. Foxy pointed it out that uh, it's the 11th birthday of the Blender Institute. Yes, Yay! Yeah. yes, awesome, <laughs> yes. I thought that was really neat. I was like, has it been that long? And yes, Yes, it it has. has. So (laughs) really good, really cool. And uh, something I noticed when I was punching in our live show information into the YouTubes, A, we have a YouTube channel. I keep forgetting that. Two, Pedro, maybe you noticed this because you pay more attention that we've like got 2,300 subscribers now. Yeah, 2.3 now. Uh, It's... Uh, uh, I noticed it while I was setting up uh, the live stream for yesterday. Mm-hmm. It's like, yeah. oh, 2.3. Mm-hmm. Neat. <laughs> Don't know how that happened, um, but it did. Oh, mm-hmm. by yeah. the way, we are playing with fire. This uh, We're still dialing things in audio-wise. <laughs> That's just a fair warning. Everything should go legibly, but in, in case it doesn't. There's your warning. So, ha. <laughs> Saving that bit of hate mail. Uh, Java. It's trap, baby. Oh yeah. Oh so, yeah. Uh, Java <laughs> eleven. There was a bit of an update to the Oracle Java, and uh, the big takeaway from it is not the improved functionality, the improved security. Not no 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 none of that. It's the update to the terms of service, which now read: you may not colon use the programs for any data processing or, or any commercial production or internal business purposes other than developing testing prototyping and demonstrating your application so what that means is if you use java 11 for the uh, java 11 jdk uh for the um well for releasing a product in any shape or form then uh, oracle's lawyers will be knocking down your door and uh, asking you for their cut now uh the article comes from uh, stephen colborn and uh, he says just use open jdk instead and uh, you know I find it really hard to use, uh, to justify the use of Java nowadays, because, uh, well, there are so many better alternatives out there right now, but I'm sure someone will point out that, oh yeah, if you want something that's really high level and can interact with everything and run on everything, They might be sitting there going, you know, you need to shut up because I gotta maintain this (laughs) legacy crap. (laughs) <laughs> yes <laughs> but then again if you're maintaining that legacy crap chances are you're not using java 11 you're using one of the old versions uh, that's still yeah. actively supported but uh you're probably not using the latest and greatest uh and yeah as for open jdk really make no mistake it is still very much being developed on what oracle built and i think right now it's actually being maintained by oracle themselves so that's not entirely a framework that i'd bank my commercial product on just saying (laughs) yeah (laughs) yeah um i'm still using ice t uh which is red hat's open jd jdk implementation on many of my computers and it still works great but it it does use an older version of open jdk 8 but never really had a problem too much with that except on rare instances <laughs> yeah it's uh, it's it, it's java in 2018 seriously did to, to, to find something else and if you can't really yeah. move away from the legacy stuff be very careful well one of the mm. issues with this when we were first rolling out of the box this article has since been updated um on mm-hmm. the third uh when you did a search for Java mm-hmm. 11 and JDK 11, I was taking you to the um, paid builds, the commercial versions instead of the open JDK builds. And 
part of that issue. But no matter how you slice it, you know, the trap basically follows if you download Oracle JDK, uh, mm-hmm. use it in production, and you didn't realize that there was a change in the license, uh, you can get a nasty phone call from Oracle's license enforcement team demanding lots of money um, yeah. because of what's in the new terms. Yeah. Uh, uh. That's... <laughs> To like, get it right, you may not use programs for any data processing or any commercial production or internal business purposes other than developing, testing, prototyping, and demonstrating your application. So, yeah, I, yeah. I, I agree with you a lot, Pedro, when it comes down to just uh, if, if you're a desktop user, don't have Java anything installed, period. Yeah. There, there's no need for it. Never. Yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, let's yeah. talk about something fun. Oh, uh, this is exciting. All systems go for open source Thelio. This is a, uh, um, oh, uh, System76 gets animated for a new handcrafted open source computer. And this is a CEO Carl Rochelle's dream of con- creating an open source computer has come to fruition. And Thelio can be pre-ordered this month. And these are really beautiful. It's a four-part science fiction miniseries of animations that will be launched in the coming coming weeks before the finalized hardware is announced. And it's 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 really um, it started out to be a neat story. In the prologue, um, uh, Zoe ventures out in space to look for Thelio, the alien source of advanced technology. And no, it's not our Zoe in chat. <laughs> this is a fictional Zoe. <laughs> and um, it, what's really neat is these thoughtful animations will go a long way to launching uh, to teaching the general public exactly what open source is and an open source computer even is a lot of people have heard the term open source but they have no idea what open source hardware is and since since system 76 is one of the most well-known uh, uh, Linux based installers on computers um, th- this is very very needed in the industry yeah. <laughs> and uh, I am curious to see because they do say in System76 they've actually been working towards uh, getting a completely open source uh, computer out there. And I'm really, really curious to see what they going to come up with when it comes to like an ARM laptop. Because, yeah, yes. those uh, rebranded <laughs> Clevos and whatnot, they're all very well and good. But like a full on ARM laptop designed for production for you know the market i i i i would but like to Pedro, see that microsoft has one yeah yeah how did yeah. the surface rt go again oh it's dead. <laughs> well, right who else released one recently maybe <laughs> like six months ago they released a regular <laughs> laptop that was arm powered that would run windows in some type of compatibility mode and yeah it was pretty miserable <laughs> Now, you kids Aww. are being wild and crazy in here, so you guys yes. going to be risk V because yes. I just want to be and- excited about it. And- <laughs> yeah, yeah. Give me and, and Fox Dog, uh, we're hoping that it would be risk V. But, you know, it, it's not quite there yet. So we'll, we'll see what other ARM processors they end up using. And, you know, something I just thought about was uh, this will be neat because then they're going to have to... Um, they're going to have to set up Pop! OS to work on ARM. So they, they've had to do all that work on the back end as well. Mm-hmm. So I just thought about that. <laughs> It'll be awesome. your standard x86 is what we're going to be seeing from System76. They are a yeah, that's very true. decent that's true. company. Because, yeah. listen, they, they, ARM would be, mm-hmm. all right, yeah, risk, risk, <laughs> that, that's not going to happen. ARM would be like, mm, myth plausible. I could see them doing that, but they got to make something that's going to have a bit more mass appeal and, you know, maybe it'll know. Be, I'm sure yeah. they will release like, uh, maybe an older, uh, Intel mm-hmm. laptop that's running like core boot or Libre boot or something yeah, like that. Exactly. Completely open source from the ground up. Yeah, sure. Uh, I can <laughs> see that, but I, I would very much hope that they do an arm laptop. Just because I yes. really want to see what an ARM laptop <laughs> yeah. built by someone who's exactly. already been selling Linux uh, laptops for this long, well, what I think they can th- do with this it. This is going to be the first thing. Like, hey, man, we're going to build our own laptop. Everything is yeah. done in-house. And we order these laser engravers, and we're going to use them. And we want to use them on things that people are going to buy. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. <laughs> we'll see. Oh, what if they make Chromebooks? Ooh, where's you got now? Ooh, uh, that would be interesting. <laughs> didn't think yeah. about that. Something else that was kind of interesting and kind of like, really? But we kind of got to talk about it is what would happen if you tried to take your code out of Linux? 
Yeah, mm. so this comes as uh, the fallout of the the implementation of um, the code of conduct uh, on the Linux kernel mailing list. And some, there was, well, there was one particular very loud voice who was uh, trying to rally developers uh, to pull the, their uh, code contributions and get them, you know, basically cripple the kernel so that they... Um, could show that they're not they don't like the new code of conduct I'm not gonna get into the why because it's very political and i <laughs> there are faults on both sides of this equation then they, how about let's yeah. not get into it yeah so um <laughs> basically what this boils down to is can you actually take back the source code that you've contributed to the linux kernel and, well, there are two big uh, ifs here. If it was for a GPL2 licensed thing, uh, then that's going to be hard. If it was for a GPL3 licensed thing, yes. Um, for GPL2, it gets a bit more complicated because at that point, you would need to justify that the platform has changed in a significant enough manner with the introduction of this code of conduct uh, that uh, it's no longer that for which you originally contributed that code. And you would have to not only justify all of that and make it stick, you would probably, especially in the US, you would need to set a precedent because yeah. otherwise you're not getting that code back. <laughs> mm. Mm. <laughs> Jill, what are your thoughts? Yeah, um, I actually, I think Karen Sandler, attorney and executive director of the Software Freedom Conservancy, said it the best. Uh, she said, there's no effective way to revoke code meaningfully that has been licensed, distributed, and redistributed under GPL version 2. While the issue is complicated, the legal structure around copyleft is robust. Yeah, open source has been around for a long time, and these licenses have been around for a long time. <laughs> So, and to me, this is actually kind of uh, ridiculous and not a real story. Um, and, you know, does it just take one one troll on the Linux kernel mailing list to get the community worried yes, about where does, we stand? Because that one <laughs> troll could give <laughs> yes. somebody an idea to take it to court. Here's the real yes, issue, man. That, I mean, that, that is true. Yes. And <laughs> you, first of all, we got to look at the positive sides of this. This could lead to closing some loopholes. Now, most of them have been addressed in yes. GPLv3, but. You know, some issues in version two could make this possible. And I just want to say anybody who gets on a mailing list or just on the Internet in general and says, I'm a lawyer, is most definitely yeah. not a lawyer <laughs> ever. I know lawyers. They don't like doing free stuff. I even know a good lawyer out of the ones I know. Um, so pay no heed to that. But, yeah, you, you got to worry about that because of the um, burn convention, which is basically you could sit back and say, I've been defamed mm -hmm. and you could try to prove that to a judge, uh, and maybe even a jury. And I don't know, man. Uh, I don't. It's a, like the whole yeah. moral rights thing. Yeah. That, I, I agree with Jill that this is completely unnecessary, but it is still a very interesting thought experiment and needs yeah. to be yes. like, oh, yeah. put down and stuff like that. And that's that. the reason that this, uh, because it is just literally one person that started this whole thing and there's a bit of a following, but it's a very, very tiny one, even in the kernel mailing list. Mm -hmm. So yeah. th what seems to be lending this story some manner of credence is what if? What if people yeah. were allowed to take True. away their uh, code contributions? What would that uh, What would that do? Would it even be possible? And that is the real story here. That's yeah. What if? So, so, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, mm -hmm. we've solved this issue. The only way you can revoke your code <laughs> is with a time machine. So yeah. pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> New beta released. Uh, Brave 1.0. You can download mm -hmm. it. You can test it out. I tried it out um, a couple of months back, and man, it spike crashed right to the desktop as soon as you looked at it and tried to use it. However, I'm happy to report 1.0. That beta, it works just fine. I'm having a good time with it. And I've been using it for a couple of weeks. Not the 1.0, but just Brave in general on mobile, on Android, because it doesn't run like butt, like <laughs> Firefox does on mobile. I mean, yeah, I, I don't I, I don't even think like the most staunch defenders will. Uh, no, that does not work well at it, all. <laughs> exactly. But uh, 
built in with this. I, I really like it, man. Uh, you have some thoughts on it, though, Pedro. Yeah, it's uh, it's Chromium. Uh, the 1.0 release is basically going to be Chromium with as much of the Google stuff stripped out as possible. Uh, they implemented everything to emphasize uh, security and privacy, but still retaining level uh, a certain level of functionality that you've come to expect from uh, your typical browsers nowadays, except for Widevine on Linux. And if you're wondering what the heck mm. a wide vine is <laughs> and why you should care, well, without it, Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Prime Video, so on and so forth, they will not work. You will not be able to see those videos. Uh, so they do say it will come in the future, but they, they, that, nowadays, that's expected functionality. That, what are you doing? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Well, we, we've we've been talking about Brave the last few months, actually, since uh, yeah. last <laughs> last July, because uh, um, we they had released a testing release of Brave. But this new beta version of Brave um, leading up to the 1.0 release includes the ability to easily surf anonymously with the Tor network by using the new private tab with Tor option. And that's really mm -hmm. op really um, awesome. So you have several options for using um uh, yeah, per tab containers Tor relying on yeah. Tor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And to report again, I mean, I'm running it on 1804 LTS with no issues. And I really like, I'm using it right now for our show notes, but I browsed around with it earlier today. And by default, it's shipping with HTTPS everywhere on. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. Ad blocking on. Blocking third-party cookies on, script blocking on, out of the box, and it's really easy to manage. Mm -hmm. In the URL bar, you click on the little brave lion, and it's right there. You can make it because what's that snurfing? Like three or four plugins out of the box. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yep. Kinda yeah. Happy no, with it's it. uh, it, they've uh, actually done a very good job of from their end giving you as secure a browser as feasible without actually cutting too much into uh functionality of the web as we see it nowadays because everything has got like javascript running ironically, on it ironically i can't everything. i can't use it too much because i need <laughs> google to keep track of me and i'm not joking i'm not being facetious because yeah. it does a real good job at recommending stories for this show among other things yep. so <laughs> yes. um let's reinvent mm -hmm. The web. Oh yes. No. Let's uh let's uh decentralize everything. Jill, do you want to take no, this man, one? Decentralization has worked so well for things like Mastodon. <laughs> oh no. I mean yeah, it's a bit iffy. <laughs> yeah. Wait, hang on. Uh, BitTorrent. Okay. BitTorrent, good example. Yeah, BitTorrent okay. is a very good example, actually. Yes, yes. Yeah, so this is uh, uh Tim Berners Lee. Uh, the father of the web tells us his radical new plan to upend the World Wide Web uh, by decentralization. And um, it's it's really interesting, yes, because uh, as I, I wrote in the show notes, um, you know, decentralized Internet is the future. So Mastodon and PeerTube are ahead of the game, and we have BitTorrent created in 2001 to thank for it. Yes, we do. <laughs> so <laughs> that 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 was pretty cool. And what I was interesting as I was doing some research on the on this is that in uh, July of 2018, BitTorrent was acquired by Tron, a company founded by Justin Sun and dedicated to accelerating the decentralization of the internet through blockchain technology. So several people have been working on this for quite a while, it seems. And um, Tim Berners-Lee, though, has a really neat uh, system of uh, using solids and solid pods <laughs> that that will be uh, really cool. And, yeah. <laughs> and in today's internet, like the whole idea behind decentralizing, not the specifics, then we'll go into the specifics of this particular yeah. implementation, mm -hmm. but like the idea of decentralizing an internet connection, uh, it, I like, I like that idea. I like that idea a lot. Anything yes. that takes away <laughs> power from the ISPs and the governments and You're the just companies. just a filthy hacker. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm just someone who, you know, I will gladly give my stuff to Google because Google in return gives me stuff that actually works. So uh, I have this uh, Chromebook right here. Chromebook. It works. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
So I would very much like to see like power being taken away from ISPs and whatnot. But this, as it stands, is a software level uh, decentralization, and for for it to become an actual thing the way I envision it, it has to happen at the hardware level. Which is not feasible right now, but I would very much like to see it before I die. <laughs> I think definitely mm-hmm. one of the things uh, that <laughs> stood out is the idea of the solid pod. That's an acronym yeah. for personal online data store. Now, this type of system has been out. It's been floated around for quite some time. This is an implementation of this idea. I mean, I could definitely see it working kind of like this. Say you wanted to get a hold to uh, a new new site. We'll call it Face Space. Say you're there and you've allowed mm-hmm. them access to your pod. So your pod of information, that is yours. That's not maintained by them. And it's got your friends, your contacts, all the posts and everything that you've created there. It's yours. Then um, you decide to get rid of face space or this new hotness comes like foot space. Mm-hmm. It shows up. You can take that pod and detach it from face space and plug it in. It's just like a routing mechanism. Then you don't have to worry about the oh but all my friends are on this service and no that now everyone can just move over here and mm. that keeps your data yours and no one no one with a web company likes that idea that is like no oh, no yeah. we need it <laughs> because you wonder how come you can get all these great services and stuff like that for the little cr- price of free it's because they're making money off stuff like that. there's a reason they don't say oh what would be uh, like a monthly subscription to X service that's provided for free. You're like, man, if you would just give me yeah. a subscription, I would use it. And they're like, you wouldn't pay the amount of money that we make off you a month. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, big data yeah. is a thing. And uh, yes, your um, adult viewing habits are very, very valuable to the right paying customer. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, the documentaries <laughs> I watch on sewers, apparently. Um, it's good times. <laughs> Cloudflare. Introducing mm-hmm. something neat. I wanted to give them a shout out because they've been on a streak of just impressing me. Um, domain registration. You can love. And I was like, that, that doesn't make sense. Where are you going with this? Um, they're going to be offering domain names uh, at cost, really below cost, because they're going to charge you exactly what they pay. But they're also going to be eating the processing charge. So they're, they're like, huh. That's definitely a thing. Um, they've done a ton of good stuff. But you could even set mm-hmm. this up to, let's say, well, like letting steamcast.com. Here's mm-hmm. a good example right here. Um, wholesale registry, 785 So then you look at your ICANN fee, 18 cents. Cloudflare, not. So your annual cost, $8, as opposed, you know, that's a .com, .org, it's 1011. But that's really neat. Now, it's currently in beta right now, though, Jill, isn't it? They're rolling it out? Yeah, yes. Yeah, so um, what's really cool is invitations are rolling out slowly, and they're gonna, of course, uh, uh, give uh, give uh, the first first uh, first people to get it are are their best customers. But one way you can move to the front of the queue is by making a donation to different organizations, and one is to Girls Who Code, which is a, is a wonderful organization organization that helps uh, get um, women and young people into Linux and coding. So it's, it's really for a good cause. So if it, you want to get up happy. there. I, I'm yeah. <laughs> almost to the point where I'm waiting for the other shoe to drop with Cloudflare because oh, yeah. <laughs> you yeah. think, this is on top of providing DDoS protection for anyone who wants it. Yeah. No cost. DNS, um, mm-hmm. affordable video streaming. I mean, I've looked into that. I got some ideas and now they're throwing on the at cost domain names. So, yeah. Yeah, I guess it's a cynic <laughs> in me. I was like, well, what are you up to? Uh, <laughs> oh, no, yeah, no. no. Um, you have to wonder, again, what exactly are they doing with the data you're giving them? It's like, are they making that much <laughs> off of you that they can offer? It's like, yeah, hey, you want a domain? There you go. That uh, We don't take any... I mean, um, you have to think about in 2018. <laughs> I mean, it's not an irrational conclusion that we've reached. Of like, what are you up to? What's the, yeah. what's the real story? <laughs> It's that it's been proven to us time and time again that, oh, that's what you are up to with yeah. other companies. <laughs> hashtag do no evil, right? Um, mm-hmm. Okay, a little bit of shameless self-promotion. <laughs> I want to throw this. This is uh, our continuation of Pedro and I's series. I don't think Jordan has <laughs> done one. 
<laughs> How's that uh, microphone review coming there, Jordan? <laughs> hey, man, it's a thing. I did a hardware thing. Uh, this is about uh, what we're recording all of our voice organs on right now. It's the FCA 1616. I did this video really for that one other person that's on the internet that was searching mm -hmm. that tore Google asunder. And it's like, uh, I don't know. And they decided, like I did, to take the Pepsi challenge on whether or not this crazy little piece of kit would work under Linux. Not just that, but it would work with Firewire. And I'm happy to report that it did. And if that one person searches on YouTube, searches on Bing, searches on DuckDuckGo, mm -hmm. and this shows up and they go, oh, great. Instead of like elbow deep in a mailing list from 2013, yeah. like I was, <laughs> with results still inconclusive. So it's not really yeah, a no. guide to set it up or anything like that. It's just a walkthrough. But I do show you how we have our mix minus and everything put together. I do feel a bit yeah. cheated because uh, you said, I'm going to make that 10 second video just saying that it works. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> no, it was like five minutes. So I feel a bit cheated. I, Aww. <laughs> it was fact, beautifully listen, done, Ben. <laughs> first of all, I made the 10 second video. I never said I was going to post it, so you can just shut up. Um, <laughs> B, I'm rubbish at making those types of videos, and that may or may not have taken me probably about seven and a half, eight hours. Oh, yes. <laughs> to get yes. all that together. <laughs> Because man, don't <laughs> don't buy lights, kids. Don't don't get lighting. Because once you have the tech and you know that you have the ability yeah. to make something mm -hmm. look right, uh -huh. then you gotta make, make it look, look good. Right. You're like, oh, jeez, yes. really? <laughs> yes. And as opposed to the entire time, I'm thinking, why don't you just cut on the webcam and like hold it over it and talk? Yeah. Over it? <laughs> no. <laughs> Yeah. I did that. <laughs> hey, hey, it's the thing. We're, we're going we're to try to up our production value a little bit. Customizing Linux mm -hmm. touchpad gestures. Why would I want to do that? That sounds horrible. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, mm -hmm. last week, you may remember that we talked about, um, uh, what was it, M-Track, uh, that provided uh, the advanced uh, gestures that you would get, uh, like, say, if you were used to a um, Mac OS uh, environment and you were using your macbook pros and you had all of those fancy swipe lefts and swipe right with three or four fingers and the whatnots well uh i specifically said that the fault that we don't have any of that currently on by default with most linux distros is because um mm -hmm. well uh, it's because of lib input and someone was really really <laughs> not impressed with that and they decided you know what i'm gonna do a thing and they did a thing. And if people are going to uh, keep on proving me wrong, this is the way to do it. Because this is uh, gestures. It's just yes. a teeny tiny little GNOME application, which uh, gives you some switches that you can uh, enable, like the three finger swipes, the pinch to zoom. Uh, there's a couple of um, extra ones if you would care to configure them yourself. And that is actually kind of awesome. So yes. I'm not much of a touchpad yeah. user, but if there's someone out there who can give this a proper go and let us know how it works, that would be very, very awesome. Oh, yeah. No, this is really awesome, especially since just two weeks ago we talked about using and configuring the M-Track driver for multi-touch yeah. on a MacBook <laughs> touchpad. and But now there is an easy-to-use GUI app called Gestures for library input slash gestures that does just that, and it also supports Wayland. Which which we're all happy about. <laughs> so it's no so, so of that's course really it cool. Does. Of course it does. Yes. Yes. <laughs> that's cool. Usability is always, mm. always welcome. So uh, <laughs> we haven't done a Microsoft Hearts Linux segment in a while. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, well this is exciting. This is Microsoft liberates ancient MS DOS source from the you museum. You just used and exciting and DOS in a <laughs> sentence for the first time since nineteen eighty seven. Oh, I actually still like DOS. 87? <laughs> so, 84. Yeah. I'm being 84. generous. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so this is uh, uh, MS DOS being put on on the Git the GitHub uh, version 1.25 and 2.0 source code is available, and um, and uh, we were just talking about creating applications as assembly for the ARM based Raspberry Pi last week. So how about we create a whole new operating system using x86 assembly and calling it DOS 2.0? Well, now you can. If you want to modify that code, you can. Are you trying to become the poster <laughs> child for Let's Not and Say We Did? Yeah, <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
You know, uh, the, reading into, in 2018, reading into the stuff, it's like, oh, the binaries will fit into 12 <laughs> kilobytes of memory. Yes. Yeah, I got a couple of Electron apps that, uh, and their one gigabyte of RAM usage that would like a word with you. Listen, man, Electron allows me to make applications <laughs> with my crayons. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes, it does. Yeah. <laughs> Good for you. Oh, oh. Well, this was cool. You know, I, I have uh, I have DOS 2.0 installed on my IBM XT uh, just behind me, and it still boots and runs beautifully. And, um, you know, my thought is also, why don't they just uh, put DOS 6.22 in there while they're at it? And uh, uh, Renee, uh, Katana Steel says, uh, how about DOS 5.0? <laughs> so, <laughs> how about free DOS? I might as Let's well put all that. the things. Um, yeah, GitHub, free DOS, you know? DOS Box. There are exactly. already open Dr. source DOS. implementations. Dr. DOS. Uh, PC <laughs> DOS. I mean, come yeah. on, we can keep going down that rabbit hole. Yeah. <laughs> but as Joe pointed out, the news is, I mean, she's like, but the source has been available for you on Spin. Yeah. Yes, but it in a zip file. It's now on GitHub. Yeah. And Pedro... Yeah. Pedro makes the uh, accurate statement. That's the only reason they bought GitHub, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I can't help but feel like there would be a much cheaper way to release the sauce code on GitHub uh, to MS-DAWs than, you know, just buying the whole of GitHub and saying, no, we own this now, so we can put it up there. I don't know. So then you got to come back and step back from the picture and go, this is Microsoft we're talking about. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The Microsoft, Facebook. Yeah, no, I, yeah, <laughs> probably. <laughs> So, feel good story of the week um, is probably <laughs> Linux now dominates Azure. The most popular operating Yay. system on Microsoft Azure Cloud today is hashtag drumroll. You guessed it. Yay. It's Linux. Um, you know, there's definitely that part of Microsoft, the part that the rest of the company needs to listen to if they would like to remain relevant, that doesn't care what you're running as long as you're running it on their services. And this article from ZDNet points out all oh, this is in our show notes, by the way. Go check that out. Uh, Linux use on Azure, 25% in 2015, up to 40% in 2017, and now we're plus minus right at 50% in 2018. And they do point out that there are at least, at least eight Linux distros available on Azure. So I think that's kind of neat, something to point out. Um, yeah. Were either of you shocked by this, though? I was like, yeah, much uh, no, no, no. Just surprised <laughs> it took this long, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And I'm just looking forward for Windows Server to go away. So <laughs> I was, you know, that, that was one of my takeaways from the story. And the other cool thing is actually the story broke and I got Ven's tweet um, as the speakers were talking about it at SUSE Expert Days um, in LA. And, uh, and they said this is one of the reasons why Microsoft has partnered with SUSE because Linux dom dominates Azure and a lot of their customers are using SUSE. And, and of course, as well as Canonical and Red Hat. But, um, yeah, they were just literally talking about it at that point when I got Ven's tweet on the story. <laughs> so that was pretty cool. And, you know, it's true. Microsoft is becoming a services company, and the profitable Azure is at its core. So since everyone is using Linux, why don't we do, you know, what everyone else is doing and run Linux? Yep. And even, <laughs> you know, uh, the NHS over here in the UK... Uh... At least as far as uh, health education England is concerned, it's been more than 60% Linux for a long, long time. There is a few yes. holdouts that are still using Windows Server, but uh, most of the um, websites that are running on our Azure platform are yeah. actually running on Windows servers, which is partly the reason uh -huh. why I still have a job. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Well, I mean, my, my brother genuinely uh, hates Mercedes, but he does make the valid point. He's like, if it wasn't for Mercedes, I wouldn't have a job. Exactly. <laughs> They're that unreliable. Um, yeah, we, same thing with Windows Server. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> what were we saying, Jill? <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, it's so true. I mean, over the years, I working in IT myself, I mean, I, may, I make money off Microsoft, so that makes me happy. And so does Pedro. So and, and so did yeah. Ben. <laughs> so we we, we 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 make money off of, off fixing their stuff. <laughs> so. Oh man, uh, we need to get into a slice of pie. But first, we want to thank all the beautiful people who are making this show possible. If that sounds like a good idea, you're like, hey man, I like these yahoos. I like what they do on Wednesdays and all that other stuff they do during the week. Hey, they even they even try to get the kids to come over on Saturdays with our gaming show. 
Don't let your kids watch our gaming show, please. <laughs> Don't let your parents watch our gaming show either. <laughs> either one. It depends on what hide your kids or hide your parents, man. 100% on that. But this is our fam- family friendly er ish attempt. And just kind of talk to everyone. But if you want to do that, we got a little page. Support it. Uh, we got Patreon. That's the best way. It's uh, just rolled over the first of the month. So we always take a little bit of a dive there, but it comes back up. We don't start panicking until about halfway through the month. But if you <laughs> want to join us on that business, man, check it out. Uh, you'll get access to probably the friendliest uh, Linux place on earth. That's in our Discord chat room. And uh, we got Amazon affiliate links. I want to thank everyone in the UK, which I'm assuming was just Pedro buying his computer parts. Um, <laughs> Admittedly, I bought all of them through our affiliate link. Brilliant. Yay. They're going to send me another check, but it's going to cost probably more than a check in order to get it done. We have Humble Bundle and uh, PayPal donations, but the best part about that is we get to thank you, not only by putting your name in the credits, stick around, check that business out, but um, I want to thank Michael for increasing Patreon pledge. Yay, and Michael! He moved up to from Death Notes, which you can get access to our show notes during the week. You can tell yeah. us that we're wrong. Well before we get a chance to be wrong on the internet. It's brilliant. A bunch of rewards, uh, early access to our live streams and stuff like that. I want to thank Linux New all the way from Tanzania. He's like, PayPal, buy something. I have no, it's probably going to be used to shipping stuff to Canada and Britannia. Um, yeah. Yay, Linux Gnuro. Yay. That's neat. Thanks for letting us do this. This is a, a fun journey, weird experiment, and we're having a good time doing it. Cool. All right. Oh, and Humble Bundle. That's the thing. Buy stuff. Oh, there. yeah. <laughs> there. I, I've done it. I, that's marketing. 101. Teach it in class. Uh, <laughs> like and subscribe. Yay. Uh, like ooh. and subscribe. <laughs> hey, yeah. ooh, I don't know. Is that pie or is it pizza or is it an amalgam of horror? Yeah. We don't ooh, know. Um, it, it looks absolutely horrid, which uh, in my eyes makes it absolutely delicious. You, you would Rick. try it, would you? You're curious or you pie curious? <laughs> <laughs> Completely pie curious. Oh, aw. <laughs> aw. Well, this is an awesome Raspberry Pi project. This is build a mini laptop that fits in your pocket with the lab Raspberry Pi. And um, you can use a Raspberry Pi 2 or 3. And you print out a 3D printed case. And you use a 3.5 inch Pi um, TFT touchscreen, wireless mini keyboard and trackpad a battery that fits between the screen and the Raspberry Pi, and a mini speaker. And it's actually really, really uh, a really cool project. And it's also featured in the recent issue of the Magpie, issue number 74, which um, I have the download link in the, in the show, show notes, and that is free. But the article also gives you tips on how to recycle an old laptop to use with the Pi. And oh, they bent all the pins. Yeah, yeah. bent all the GPIO pins. pins. My blood pressure just went up. Like, oh. Yes. Oh, but that's fun to do. Okay. And if you, you, do, so. you just if you just want to run a lightweight Debian-based Linux distro on your old laptop, you can install Raspbian for x86. For those of you who didn't know that that was available, and um, so this was a really really fun project, and um, I definitely want to do it for sure. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, no i keep yeah. looking at that and it, that's stretching the definition of laptop yeah it is my <laughs> biggest problem is i wouldn't be able to see the screen the the text on the screen but i'd yeah. have to use a, a magnifier <laughs> the one thing that really caught me was like wait a minute this thing even has um data access leds on it's like oh okay that's a good oh, yeah, use of yeah. that i like yeah, how that's it done is actually. it's well uh but you know, this being this, I mean, I think it sets expectations accordingly because when you mm-hmm. you put a Raspberry Pi 2 or a 3 uh, B plus in there uh, into a laptop case, you're lying to people. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm not saying it's a great little toy, but you functional function wise, maybe not so much. This this is like, you know what you can get away with. It. Have some fun with this. I saw somebody in our Discord. Uh, I forget who it was. Was like I really want my own like arm mounted, uh, like Pit Boy, like Leela had, mm. yeah, something along those yeah. lines from Futurama, and I was like that <laughs> yeah. would work. I mean, it's a bit chunky, but it's a really clean build. I would say, what do you think, Pedro? I'd say a solid seven out of ten on the TSA acceptance meter. You'd have yeah. to uh, actually <laughs> sand down the uh, obvious three D printed lines. Oh yeah, and maybe put some clear coat over it to mm-hmm. hide the transparency. But uh, no, it's um, it 
it's a really awesome project and uh in the magazine they also have like all the other options yeah you can like reuse an old laptop just get the screen uh inverter that works with a raspberry pi and the battery adapter and everything else or you can get a pie top and yes i do mm -hmm. want a pie top i've been looking at the pie tops for a long long time and i don't want that price tag anywhere near yeah. my wallet because they? they yeah 223 pounds yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's like 300 bucks for a shell that doesn't work unless you put a Raspberry Pi in it. Yeah. So, mm, oh. no. All right, fine. Yeah. Um, so we're not going to be bending these GPIO pins. <laughs> Get a little bit of software on this side here. This is why GPIO zero is better. I'm looking for my gerbil, if you're wondering what I'm doing. I get too many monitors. Uh, is better than... Mm -hmm. RPI GPIO for Raspberry Pi projects, and it kind of is, man. I mean, it's a front-end mm -hmm. language wrapper to simplify GPIO setup and usage, and it, it really does. I, I looked mm -hmm. at that, and I was like, wait a minute, Strider could read that. Oh, shots fired. <laughs> um, <laughs> it, it absolutely follows the uh, easy-to-read, shortest-possible requirement. I mean, if you just do, like, just the basic comparison. Look at that. From GPIO yeah. and port lead. Lead equals lead number 18. Lead on. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. I mean, listen, yeah. I, I'm not saying GPIO was difficult. I mean, that's human readable, 100%. You get your set mode, you get your setup, you get your output. But you're going from five lines to three. Yeah. It's uh, SDL2 for Python. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Great. No one needs Vulcan support. <laughs> <laughs> that could be a thing but maybe that's something yeah. you want to check out if you want to play around with some automation devices and uh, make leds blink among other things which i actively mm -hmm. stay away from because i'm scared of leds yeah and this is also good for for teaching um um how to how to use uh, the gpio under on the raspberry pi to students and especially you know even young kids so it's really easy to learn <laughs> All right, um, Pedro, we got some feedback coming up, man. Oh, yes, yes, we do. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you are out there uh, and you heard something that was wildly inaccurate or uh, completely misunderstood or even incomplete, you can let us know about it by submitting some feedback over on LinuxGameCast.com. You hit the contact button, you choose LWDW on the little choosy box, fill out the rest of the form, uh, take Google's CAPTCHA challenge, whatever that happens to be. Maybe it's nothing. Who knows? And uh, we will feature your message right here, right now. Or, of course, if you're one of our Patreons, you can just leave us a comment there. Those, of course, take uh, highest priority. Uh, if you'd like to um, also leave us a comment on the, the YouTube videos like uh, some people uh, did this week, you can. No guarantees that mm -hmm. uh, they'll be featured like uh, the very next show because Just use we may our actually contact miss form. them. This is what he could have said like five <laughs> minutes ago. Just use our contact form. We'll be done. Yeah. It'll be good. <laughs> All right. So first up is, uh, it's well, it's one of those YouTube comments. Santa SL. Hail Santa. Uh, <laughs> he says uh, about the Tuxedo hey, Infinity Hey, man, book. listen, it could be Santa ASL. <laughs> could be, could be. It could be a question <laughs> and a name. <laughs> uh, the good old days of IRC. But he uh, left us a comment on the uh, Tuxedo Infinity book review, what I did a while back. And he, uh, he says, very helpful, even if this review is nearly a year old. My current Lenovo E330 uh, laptop still works perfectly after all these years, but the 1366-768 display resolution kind of sucks nowadays. I was looking at newer Lenovo and also the v3 release for the uh infinity book pro 13 now the, the tuxedo variant uh looks more and more interesting the only question i i would really have and i really hope you can answer how easy is it to apply the customization after an own installation of let's say zubuntu on an encrypted partition well it's uh actually very mm -hmm. very easy you it's just uh, can do it can be done <laughs> <laughs> no it can be done you just go to their website they have a little installation how to on how you can add the repos and basically install all the packages that they've customized themselves but even easier than that is if you want to have the full disk encryption and everything else, you can just use the little uh, USB dongle that comes, which is a flash drive, that comes with the, um, the laptops. And that will actually uh, let you 
just do a minimal install of one of their uh, pre-built distributions and just set it to encrypt from there. That's actually a much easier way, in my opinion. <laughs> yeah. Good times. Uh, yeah. Coming up next, um, mm-hmm. let's see. Do I have the right thing set up? Yeah, I do. Um, mm-hmm. This is from Vern... You'd the say- Naked Truth. This one. Uh, no, Vera Tenuda. He's, Vera he's Tenuda. a long time. Uh, yeah, long time patron. A long time, yeah. Uh, check it out. <laughs> he, <laughs> he writes it, uh, wow. This was uh, about the uh, FCA 6 Firewire. Yeah, exper- yeah, experiments in firewires. Like how Firewire has improved over the years. I remember having lots of Firewire things, camcorders, external drives, even a CD ROM multi changer. That's fancy. Mm-hmm. Uh, nice to see it just works these days. Yes, kind of a uh, bit of a side jag uh, for one of the reasons I just like, hey, it works under Linux was one of the points I was trying to drive home in that epically long five minute video, Pedro, because um, <laughs> I had to fit things in. Was, I still feel cheated. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He gets more. He, he, he doesn't understand business <laughs> very well. Um, <laughs> was that, you know. Support for Firewire under Linux is, it's just tops now. You just put it in, you're done. So if you got, you know, old hard drives, DV cameras, tapes and stuff that you need to digitize, um, apparently CD changers, I don't know. Just just get, let, let that one go. Um, but yeah, the DV cams and stuff like that, that you might want to get converted to actual digital storage, you can do it. You're not going to have to mm-hmm. fight it. And I think that's important for people to know. And it's cheap yep. to do. Don't buy the USB adapters. Those are probably going to be, you're going to have a bad time. But <laughs> you can pick up a firework, make sure it's got a TI chipset in it, and you're out 25, 30 bucks. Hmm? Yeah. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> awesome. This is also really good for musicians. That's the, that was what was so wonderful about your video, Vin, because it's, it's, uh, musicians are still using the fireware cards. Well, <laughs> interfaces, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, some people are a bit crazy about it. I was, uh, talking in our pre pre super shows and it was like i went back and read the history and i was like oh man the oh I, i'm gonna be one who's like firewire should have never died because uh, i didn't know a lot about it and i was like wow usb the superior uh <laughs> protocol the no it didn't win usb won but a lot of music stuff the hot hotness is moving over to thunderbolt so that's gonna be yeah. more cray cray so but if you have an old interface uh or new interface because they still make them and you want to plug it in. It's thing. It's kind of brilliant. So uh, I think that's going to do it for this week, everyone. Yeah. Maybe. Hey. Looks like it. <laughs> I don't know. Um, oh. Are we going to roll some credits? I don't know. I'm trying to do a lot of stuff right now. We can roll oh, credits okay. or we can have we- the credits just roll on us. No. And- yeah. <laughs> I will not allow this. Yay. <laughs> We're, we're waiting for uh, the uh, there's <laughs> credits the music. to roll in. Uh. There they are. <laughs> A Linux Gamecast original series. Yay! Ben Stone, Pedro Mateus, and Jill Bryant. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> and Shatrell Diamant. I'm going to change it up next week in case you read it off again. <laughs> <laughs> No, Thank Jill you, was offering room. to do the narration, so uh, yeah. yeah, no. <laughs> Throw a curveball. Yeah. His name was Robert Palmer. <laughs> I'm Rick James. Thank you, chat room. We love you. A hundred and thirty-eight. And thirty-eight. Oh, yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll see you next week. Everyone have a good one. Okay. Uh, cheers. Bye bye, everyone. <laughs>